So centuries ago, Leonardo da Vinci said, we know more about the movement of celestial bodies than about the soil underfoot. Today, more than ever before, we need to understand what's happening beneath our feet. Limited access to clean water, food production for a growing population, and extreme weather conditions are impending crises, all rooted in our treatment of the soil. It's not time to panic, but it is time to make some serious changes. And it's time to stop treating our soil like dirt. <laughs> so, I understand that a lot of us have a hard time differentiating between soil and dirt, so I brought some with me. So this is soil. It's a mix of sand, silt, and clay, maybe some gravel, air, water, humus, and trillions of microbes, bacteria, fungi, nematodes, worms and beetles, all this life beneath our feet. And this is an underground universe that's a complex ecosystem we're just starting to understand. But the beings in the soil are busy breaking down chemical compounds and plants and feeding roots and filtering and storing water and sequestering nutrients. So that's soil. And then we've got some dirt too. So that's dirt. Okay. So, all right, so now that we've got that sorted out, let's talk about soil. So, soil is formed over many, many, many thousands of years from rocks breaking down, plants decomposing, rivers depositing sediment, wind blowing in silt and volcanic ash, oceans and glaciers advancing and retreating. But land is a limited resource and soil is its fragile skin, so when we let it wash away or blow away or we compact it or contaminate it, it doesn't regenerate quickly. So we're losing our soil, we're mining it, or we're just paving it over. And, and that's a problem because we lose some of the natural processes that we've relied on. So I want to talk about three ways that soil plays a vital role in our lives. And first, let's talk about something pretty fundamental like water. Uh, so we're already fighting over water, right? Even in Alabama, we have an abundant water supply, but we're competing with Tennessee and Georgia and Florida over water rights. In California, there's a drought that's pitting farmers against cities and homeowners, and over 800 million people in the world don't have access to clean drinking water. Now, soil is the Earth's water filtration system. So when it rains or snows or floods, water can either seep into the soil or it can wash away. The water that seeps into the soil is filtered because it all it carries some compounds with it that filters through and enters the groundwater clean and ready to use again. The water that runs off carries with it not only soil, but contaminants, pollutants from roads, uh, fertilizers and pesticides from farmers' fields, and, and those accumulate downstream. So that's what causes the dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico, and that's why the city of Toledo had to cut off its water supply this summer. And wetlands are the Earth's best water filtration system, but we're losing wetlands at an amazing rate. We lost two-thirds of the wetland, global wetlands since 1997, so it's 250 million acres. So now we've got water that's becoming a limited resource, and we're losing our natural ability to filter it. Okay, so that's just one vital role. Along with water, we also need some food. So, and soil feeds us. And we all know that, right? Okay, that's the easy one. But we need to feed a growing population. It's projected to reach 9 billion people by the year 2050. And those people are eating higher on the food chain, so that's more meat, less rice and beans, and that's more resources per calorie. In the meantime, we're losing all this soil to erosion. The last year, they lost 1.7 billion tons of soil on cropland in the United States in a single year. And we're doing better than some other um, countries. Our nitrogen fertilizer is based on the fossil fuels that we have a limited supply. And we have a peak phosphorus crisis that you probably haven't even heard of. Our crop yields are increasing, but their nutritional value is decreasing. We treat our manure like toxic waste instead of fertilizer and we throw away almost as much food as we eat. So that's not really a sustainable strategy. So we need to be looking at long-term soil productivity. 
And that, that's what I get to do. I'm really lucky. I get to work with farmers and scientists that are working to build healthy soils, that are deeper and more porous, and can produce more nutritious food per acre or square foot or hectare. And so on our farm and on farms like ours, we do things like plant cover crops and, and rotate our crops, and we minimize the use of tillage, and we inoculate the soil with compost and worm castings, and we minimize the use of chemicals to build that soil food web and let the microbes do the work for us. And it works, we've seen it, and it goes by a lot of different names. Permaculture, organic farming, no-till farming, biodynamic, and the philosophies definitely differ, but the ultimate goal is to build healthy soils. So if we can do that, if we can focus on filtering water and feeding people, then the third vital role for soils falls into place, because soils can help to mitigate climate change. Healthy soils are resilient, so they can buffer the effects of extreme weather. They're like a sponge, so if it rains too much, that water seeps through. But if it doesn't rain enough, it holds more water in place, so it can keep a crop growing for longer. And that's on the farm scale. On the atmospheric scale, well, we have excess carbon in the atmosphere, right? Carbon is an essential soil element, so we need it in our soil. So instead of like, injecting it into the Earth's core or blasting it into space, let's take that excess carbon and store it in the soil where we can use it. It just seems like a pretty easy answer to me. So I hope you, you understand that, that soil is not a cure-all. It's a key factor in the solution, though. And I understand that most of you are probably not farmers or caretakers of wetlands or environmental engineers, so, so what can you do? Well, proactive policy can go a long way towards solving these problems. And we need more advocates for soil. We're starting to see change. The USDA is talking about healthy soil like never before. And the UN, just 2015, they've named the International Year of Soil. So I hope you all join me in celebrating that. <laughs> and, but a lot of what you can do is, is on the local level. Land management decisions are made more locally. So planning and zoning, waste management, farmland conservation, those are all things that happen on a local scale, and you can get involved and make a difference. Or maybe you're already involved, and maybe you're just not thinking about soil like you might should be. The other thing that you can do that a lot of people are doing is just growing their own food. A plant on the windowsill, a garden in your backyard or an empty lot, or even outside at your local school, like here. And they see what soil can do for them if they treat it right. And, and you know what? they stop treating their soil like dirt. So give it a try. If you start to like soil, you might not even mind dirt so much. <laughs> Thank you.